Hi, and welcome to our Google Hangout. Uh, I'm Sid Ziegler from Outsports.com. We've got a couple special guests today. One is uh, my good friend Wade Davis from the You Can Play Project. Wade, since you're in the Bay Area right now, right, Wade, with uh, Stanford Berkeley? Yep. And we got Connor Mertens. Many of you met him uh, via my article yesterday about him. Uh, he's a football kicker for the Willamette University Bearcats. He's the first active college football player to come out publicly. And I guess I, I'm just going to jump right into one of the questions that one of our readers asked. Connor, uh, just ask you, sup? Not much, bro. Just trying to get my schoolwork done. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, how's, how's the last uh, 24 hours been? Insane. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, well, try. <laughs> I guess that's why we're here, huh? Uh, oh, point of clarification. Willamette. Come on. Willamette? I, I've been saying Willamette? it right. I have been saying it right. Willamette. <laughs> I've been saying it right for the last two weeks, and I all right, I screwed up. I'm sorry. Willamette. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, at least, at least I didn't say Williamette, which some people have said. Been there. <laughs> uh, so no, I mean, it's just like it's been overwhelmingly supportive. Uh, only recently have I gotten a little bit of backlash that hasn't been too fun, but uh, other than that, it's just been life changing. And I, the emails keep pouring in of stories of people just telling me exactly why I'm doing this. Kids, adults telling me, emailing me, saying I'm 50 years old now, but I was forced to quit basketball because of the slurs that I was hearing, afraid of being outed. And it's just that it, it kills me to hear that and to know that I might be able to hopefully help with that is a really nice thing. So let's kind of go back to the beginning a little bit here, all of what a month. I actually met Connor through Wade. How did you two connect? I've never even heard that story. <laughs> I think Connor can tell it better than I can. Um, so yeah, I I got a little Bible journal that I keep all my life notes in and whatnot. And um, a lot like my sophomore year in high school, I, I wrote about we were talking about nonprofits in in one of my government classes or something. And I, and I thought I'd really like to start a nonprofit to help uh, to help this situation out in, in sports and sure enough I started googling looking around and stuff and Wade beat me to it and uh, he uh, he was involved in something that I was already doing it so I shot him an email hoping to maybe get involved and um, get some advice on where I go from here and that's kind of where it took off. When, when was that? Shoot what was that? Jan no. Uh, it was Nobody. like right around the Christmas time because I was um I was You're in Paris. away, yeah, yeah. So it was right around Christmas. Got. And so, how did you two? I mean, how, Connor, how did you come to the idea? You know, maybe I should tell my story publicly. Um, you know, that wasn't my idea at first. My idea at first was to just talk to uh, close family friends in my football team. Mm -hmm. Um, but Wade really helped me figure out that I can, that I have a well. Not that I have a great responsibility, but I have a chance to make a lasting impact, and it's hard to turn something down like that. Well, one of the things from talking to Connor is that um, he's just really passionate about uh, making a difference, not only in his life, in his football team's team's lives, but his community. And and from from speaking to him, he inspired me, you know. And I told him, I said, "Hey, if you're okay with this, I think that you can change." a lot of lives by telling your your story and Connor is has just an amazing heart and I thought like if he's comfortable enough with with this then I would connect him to you and um, and then you you know you've done this with me and other people that you would really um, see see Connor's heart too and then and then kind of just run from there yeah I put the hard sell on once I got a <laughs> like I so often do. So it only took me about a week to convince Connor to for sure do this. It took me it took me seven years to convince Wade. So I guess I'm better. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. So uh, I know Wade. You hopped on a plane Monday. Uh, you woke up Sunday morning thinking you were headed to San Francisco on Tuesday, and by by Sunday night you had decided to hop on a plane and head to Oregon. To be there when Connor, <laughs> when his team found out, so what? How did that process hold? 
happened? Um, well, you know, um, after you and I spoke and you were talking about how the coach was going to really talk to the team, and one thing I've been really successful at is, is having teams really connect with me. Um, I think I can kind of take the edge off it with humor and honesty, and Connor's like a little brother to me, and anything that I could do to really make sure that this process was was uh, easy, um, I was willing to do it. And after, um, from talking to the coach, you know, he was he was like, if you could, could come out here and talk to the to the guys, I think it really helped. And to be to be honest, they kind of did need me. You know, I think they needed me to really make sense of, of it all, to really kind of have that you know that locker room conversation around it, like that's kind of this that's I don't I don't know how to how to language it, but to take the edge off of it and to not and, and to show them that it it wasn't a a big deal, and to show them that Connor wants to be treated the way he's always been treated. He's still a jerk. He still wears terrible shoes. You know all these 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 things. And walking out of that meeting, I really felt that that they were so happy that I I kind of gave them a blueprint to to really deal with Connor. Wade, you are like the gay sports of Mel DeMarco. You talk about shoes more than anybody else I know. Well, so I get to that university, and I'm wearing some Jordans, and I'm thinking that I'm in, I'm in Oregon. These kids are going to have some amazing sneakers on, and none of them had good good shoes on. I was so disappointed. So the first thing I did was I made fun of all of them. So I, I'm going to talk to someone at Nike to make sure that Lameth gets better shoes and sneakers because this has got to change. I mean, this is horrible. Well, Nike might be in Oregon, but Oregon is still Birkenstock country. You have to remember that. <laughs> they weren't even wearing wearing Birkenstocks. They were wearing like <laughs> like like penny loafers and stuff. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> it's all about the Sperry life up here. Everyone's wearing Sperrys. So, so Connor, as uh, I know, you were not at that meeting. Wade, your coaches, uh, all the other players, the team leaders were, but you chose not to be at that meeting. Why did you choose not to? And what was going through your head as all as you knew the entire team was in a room talking about you? Yeah. Um. So the reason why I didn't want to sit down on the meeting is because I wanted them to be able to say whatever they want, not feeling comfortable about having me in the back watching over them, or um, I wanted them to be real honest. And I, I it wasn't that I was afraid they weren't going to be honest. I just didn't want them to hold back and uh, censor themselves to a point where they would um, be afraid of offending me. And uh, so I, I just wanted them to have that freedom. Um, also, I think that would be a really awkward conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Flip over the paper, start reading the letter, and I'm sitting in the back watching them. Like, that would just be an awkward situation in general. <laughs> um, but no, I, when I was doing it, I uh, first went to one of my uh, lifelong friends from back home. She went to school here. Uh, I found her in the library, and I sat there with her for a while, just like looking around, waiting for something to happen, like <laughs> for the for the riot to start coming in with their torches and stuff. But uh, <laughs> believe it or not, that didn't happen. And um, no, I ended up going to Walmart with a buddy to take my mind off of it. So <laughs> good old Walmart, save the day. <laughs> like you do when you want a distraction, you go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Oregon. <laughs> so what? So so. No, wait. In the meeting, did guys voice concern or problems with it? What happened as soon as those guys finished reading that letter? You know, the most amazing part about it is that um, I was looking at the guys as they were reading the letter, and they were intentional of, about about reading it. And I think that what you saw was that when Connor opened his heart in the letter, the guys in the room opened their heart too. And um, not one person snickered. Not one person looked up from the letter. There were no side com conversations. They were really like thinking about how they felt about it. And then the the coach stood up there and he made some amazing com comments about how Connor's their their brother and nothing changes. And the players kind of echoed the ex same. I mean the exact same uh, sentiments. And a lot of them were. Whether we're like, you know, this doesn't really matter to to us. He's our brother. You know, we're still going to treat him the exact same 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 way. Um, you know, it was funny because when I I got there, a lot of them thought that I was a new recruit because I was sitting amongst them, and I, I was like, I still look so young, yeah. Um, but still got the year um, of eligibility. <laughs> yes, um, but it was just really cool. Just that, I mean, it was it was nothing to these guys, and. I I hung out with the guys for another 20 30 minutes 
afterwards, an hour long with the coaches, and, and we really just had a discussion about how do you support Connor? You know, how do you make sure that he doesn't feel um, apart from the team? And they were less concerned about anything but to making sure that Connor felt felt good and that he knew that nothing was different. So, Connor, you're in Walmart or the library or wherever you were <laughs> at the time, and how did you know that the meeting had ended? Um, I had got texts from teammates, um, emails from teammates, cause, and they were just all saying, what's up, bro? Love you. Nothing changes. Uh, we got your back. Anyone gives you crap, let me know. Um, yeah, no, I mean... That's when it was kind of like, that's when it started to really set in, was getting the text saying, because it's kind of like trying, hard to hide it after that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, and, and so that night, what happened as, as the night goes on? I mean, did you see some of your teammates? Right, yeah. Um, so a couple of them actually wanted to meet up and, um, in person and tell me, so, tell me some stuff, just because, I don't know, it's a more sentimental something that way. But, uh, Nah, a couple of them wanted to hang out, um, came up, the first thing they did, didn't even say a word, just came up, give me a hug, uh, said, hey, it's all good, dude, you can kick the heck out of a ball, and that's all that matters, so. Yeah, he dissed me to hang out with those guys, actually. <laughs> I, mean, I think that was a good choice. I think so, too. You'll get, you'll get, wait, will come by a, another time. I'm coming to a game this season, so I'm excited. We got box <laughs> seats, just for you. Now, uh, just for Wade? Oh, really, Connor? Sorry, uh, one of the guys. <laughs> one of the guys now. Come on. We tried to, our fraternity tried to recruit him, so <laughs> I'm so, yeah, that's fresh. right. So 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 Connor, you just joined you just pledged Sigma Kyo this past weekend, what two days before you, you came out to the world? What what did they say about this now? Uh got my bid. Um and we're working working on pledge ship coming up here, but um it was the Friday night, so no Sunday night actually, that we got um, our bids and actually signed signed on to be members. And uh, that night we were all hanging out, and um, one of the pre the president of our fraternity, he's a wide receiver. He's graduating this year. Um, and when I came on a visit to Willamette, he was actually one of the guys that I first met, and he hung out with me, and my. Uh, and my host the whole time, and he's just always had me under his wing ever since the first time I met him. And then another guy, um, really good friend, he he does Bible study with me. He's a heck of a player too. But he, uh, we both, we all went for like uh, a drive, and I just told them, and then they're like, they, they, yeah, no, it it was fine. I was I was kind of worried that the fraternity was gonna be uncomfortable with it too, but again, it's just another outlet that I've gotten unwavering support from, and it's been insane. So you, you brought a Bible study in, in, in the story, um, talked about how you have dedicated much of the last four or five years of your life to young life, and, and now you know that having come out, you won't be able to work with them. Have you heard from them or other people in Bible study or your church about the story? Yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, community that's been reaching out to me. Is um, I've gotten emails from pastors across the country, um, Many people uh, from back home that I used to uh, I used to lead uh, middle schoolers, and almost every single one of the kids that I led in my small group have sent me a text or an email saying nothing changes. They they still think of me. They still look up to me and whatnot. And that meant a lot to me. Um, but uh, haven't talked to Young Life yet. I'm not trying to uh, smudge the name of Young Life. They they took care of me for four years or four or five years of my life. So I'm not trying to put them down. I understand you're not trying to put them down and you're drinking out of a Young Life bottle right now, <laughs> which, they might, which they may ask to uh, have back. But at the same time, you can no longer be part of that organization simply because you came out. Yeah. And How does that make you feel? It was actually right here, sitting at this seat, that I found that out. And I kind of read it, read it again, Read it one more time to make sure I was not missing something, and then I walked back there to my bed, crawled in bed, and sat there for a couple hours just trying to think about all the amazing times I had, all the memories I made, and 
and I don't know, just thinking about how it sucks I won't be able to give those back to anybody, um, give them the experience that I had, the life-changing experience that I had. One of our readers, uh, Jonathan, asked, and this is a question for both of you, and it's a question I think that's on a lot of people's minds, and some people, when, when I put in the article that you're the first active college football player to come out publicly, and by publicly we mean you know in the mainstream media so that the entire public knows, many people have said that can't be true, and they've said this one was out and that one was out. No, it is true. He is the first. And Jonathan asked, how can it be that it took 2014 for one single active college football player to come out. Wade, how is that? That seems inconceivable, but, but it, yet he's the first. Well, uh, I, I think there's a couple factors at, at play. Like, there are out college athletes who just haven't had someone write a story about them. And, you know, Connor is a very unique individual that he was ready, you know, to tell his story publicly. He was ready to, to make sure that the world knew um, who he was, and I think that people, you know, if you're out to your teammates, sometimes that's enough, you know, but Connor really felt a responsibility to, to speak to not only his football community, but his uh, college community and his community back, back home. Um, so I don't think uh, people realize that there, is, there are a lot of athletes who are out to their team who just haven't allowed someone to write a story about them. So it isn't this 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 football community that's so homophobic that people don't want to come c come out. They just may not want to, like myself, have a story written about them. Connor, what do you think about that? I mean, do you you were kind of stunned when I told you that you would be the first one to do this. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think that was. Uh, I I thought exactly what you just said. Is it's 2013? I thought that. I thought that we were. Uh, 14. <laughs> I thought we were past that by now. But, well um, <laughs> I got 29 days behind me. Um, so, I don't know. It just, it, it was kind of inconceivable that we haven't, that it hasn't happened yet. And I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I'm really hoping that this one day isn't a news article and it isn't something that we have to write about. Um, that it is just commonplace and it is something that is taken as regular. Well, so, uh, a lot of people say that, like, oh, this, sh this shouldn't be a story, but for, for me, I think that it's, it's great to celebrate what makes us all unique and, and whether LGBT people are widely accepted in the culture or not, the aspect of those people that makes them unique. So I, don't, I, I just don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating what makes us different. So, you know, I, I hope that we do continue to tell stories like yours because I think that, that each one of us has a different story and different people respond to them, uh, you know, depending on their own personal lives. I think also that, that Connor's done a great job of creating a conversation uh, around sports and religion. You know, um, there, as Connor said, like his football team has been amazing. Um, there are people in the religious community that have been amazing. So. I think that we're, there's a shift in the way that people think about sports and also religion that, that Connor's really helping to create a really interesting and a nuanced way of looking at it. So I'm so proud of him. Well, Connor, I know I, I heard today from another college football player. So we're going to have another story. Uh, really? about he, he, just, he just finished his senior season. Uh, so okay. You've, you, you've started a tidal wave. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're going to be busy for the next couple of months. Well, and that's so okay. are you. I kind of, it's yeah. interesting, Wade, because you know, as I'm talking to Connor and, and some other people, I've kind of decided that I'm taking aim at football this, this year. And, 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 and simply, it's more not that football needs to change, but more I want to show people how much football as a sport has already changed. One of, one of Connor's teammates, and I put this in the article, said football doesn't discriminate. Yeah. And, and, and now, it's not just the sport doesn't discriminate, but the vast majority of people in the sport don't discriminate, yet there's still this idea that it does somehow. I think that I'm, I'm, I'm writing this piece now, and as I was writing, I had a, a, a revelation that football is the gatekeeper of masculinity. I mean, and, and in a lot of ways, it our society 
that football shows what's good about our society and also bad about our society. And people want to believe that real men only exist in this fo football space and that the people who are watching the game of football are watching like pure maleness and masculinity at its finest. So the idea that, that there are gay men who play this actual sport really changes the way that we think about what's what's right about our country and our culture. And I think that why people want to pigeonhole athletes as being these homophobic people is because they can't believe that it could be anything different. And I, I think another part of that is that in high school, a lot of the people who were maybe deemed the bullies were football players. And we just don't imagine that football players can grow up, can mature, and can go, you know what, the way that I was in high school was inappropriate, it was it was wrong, I was a kid, I was dumb, I was stupid, and now I moved, by, I'm, I moved past that. Connor, you, you, did you have it in your head that, that football was, you know, a, a kind of a, a special corner of society, it was different, maybe your friends might accept you, but football, I mean, you, you even said that football was the place that you feared coming out the most. Yeah, um, it's just everywhere you go, especially first the first week of um, uh, fall camp as a freshman is an experience because everyone's coming in from their own schools and everyone has this big, huge masculinity complex and they're trying to be the alpha male, so everyone's walking around chest puffed out and you hear all of that and that's when you hear the worst things um, is because people are trying to establish themselves and I don't know, I, I, it's just, yeah, the football community, we if we're not seen as the most masculine, um, the most focused, the toughest, the, the hardest person out there, then you're dejected and you don't, you, you're not given a fair shot and you're not, um, you're written off as not a good football player. So one of, another of our readers, Kevin, asked this question, uh, you know, you've been out for, what, 30 hours now publicly and, and your coach is known for about a week and the rest of the team is known for a couple of days. And I want to ask both of you this question, what's been your biggest surprise about this whole thing? Connor, start with you. What, what, what's been the biggest surprise? Honestly, just the support. Um, and the, uh, the, the, the ease that it's been, um, I mean, it hasn't been easy, but uh, on my mind, it's just been, I finally have this weight gone, and it's just been so, so much more rewarding since I, I, I've, ta I've done taking these steps. Um, but yeah, the support definitely, like, um, kids that I, I, I thought would hate me, write me off, never talk to me again, are shooting hoops with me after workout today, and um, it's just, yeah, never, never thought that this... Uh, this day would come. Wait, has anything surprised you? The only thing that really surprised me is the terrible shoes that everyone at Willamette wore. <laughs> like I, I knew out of the gate that the football team would be fine. Like um, I knew Connor would would be Connor. Um, and there's really nothing that has surprised me about his his story. Um, actually, no, I'm lying. What surprised me was that there wasn't an, another college athlete who had been written about publicly. That was that was a, a surprise. I was like, really. So yeah, my biggest surprise has been, you know, I, I thought the story would be big and that it would be well read. And the night before, Jim Bozinski, my business partner, and I at Outsports, we were talking about how many page views and how many times we thought this might be shared, and 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 he threw out a number, and and I threw out a bigger number, and in what 28 hours, it's already eclipsed. It's equaled our two guesses combined, and and I I did not expect that. This story is one of now already the five most read stories we've ever had in the 15 years we've been publishing out sports. So it it surprised me, and it's been on Fox Sports and CBS Sports and Yahoo Sports and ESPN. The AP wrote about it. It's been everywhere. So Apparently that showed up on E News too. On what? It was on E! News? <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> I mean, it's, I think, it, it's crazy. I think it speaks to the authenticity of Connor, and he really was naked in his piece. I mean, it was so well-written and funny and honest, and I think that that's what people really are gravitating towards, and it's who he is. I think that's a great point, and I think the other piece is that it's football. 
and, oh, and yeah. football is king. I've said the perceptions of homophobia in sports will not end until we have big time athletes coming out in the NFL. And period, like Jason Collins and Robbie Rogers, they're so important to our movement. But the NFL is king, and and until you you win football, the, the battle will continue. I think that's problematic, but that's a whole different com- conversation. <laughs> well, it's problematic, but it also makes the target really clear. So, <laughs> yeah. so Connor, what do the next few days have in store for you? Um. Uh, I just got off the phone with uh, people from Fox Sports. Um, Sounds like they're going to come up here and do a little interview. Um, And then a couple of football workouts, a little bit of homework, hopefully some free time. (laughs) When are you going to see... (laughs) Why would he clean his room as a college student? He's a college freshman for right now. You should see the floor. You can actually see the, the carpet, which is way more than I can say about my room back home. (laughs) <laughs> Connor, when when are you going to see your boyfriend next? You have not seen him this week, right? Oh my goodness, I haven't seen him forever. Actually, it's been like a week. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Here. Well, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Valentine's Day. I think he's actually coming up here for Valentine's Day. Uh, we have, like I said, I'm playing. I'm in football. He's in baseball, and so we don't have a lot of free time uh, to sneak away on a weekend or something. I know you told me that when he would visit, you would, um, you know, ask your roommate, and the roommate would, of course, believe that maybe you were having a girl over. Is uh, have you and your roommate talked about that? You know, there there was one point when he came to hang out and we wanted to watch a movie, and so I, I texted my roommate and I said, "Hey, I'm having somebody over tonight," and he actually assumed it was a girl. <laughs> and uh, I, I I mean, I never lied. I did not lie. I never said it was a girl, but. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So we we hung out. Um, I don't know. I think we're probably just gonna hang out with a lot of friends. I, I got a lot of people I wanted to meet up here, so probably doing a lot of that. Great. All right. Well, well, thank you both for joining us, Wade. Good luck. Wade is uh, at the Bay Area this week, talking at both Stanford and Berkeley, and a really fantastic uh, series of engagements. The, the the two women's basketball teams had back to back games against each other this week and Wade's a part of that. Um, so, so keep it up, Wade. And, and Connor, good luck. Let us know if you need anything. Love you, Connor. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen.